It's Monday, September 30. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The private sector organization of Jamaica has welcomed the recent upgrade of Jamaica's sovereign credit rating from B to B plus by Standard & Poor's rating agency S&P. PSLJ President Keith Duncan stated that the upgrade is a positive development for Jamaica. S&P also affirmed Jamaica's B short-term foreign and local currency sovereign credit ratings. Additionally, it says the stable outlook reflects the agency's expectation that Jamaica will continue to bolster its fiscal resilience through continued public sector reform, a declining debt burden, and will generate modest real gross domestic product. New measures are being put in place by the National Water Commission to ensure that developers establish adequate water storage facilities in for residents of apartment complexes the agency is working in collaboration with the municipal corporations developers will be required to ensure that residents have access to ample water supply in order to be connected to the nwc system president of the national water commission mark barnett told jis news Based on the certificate of approval issued by the NWC, which is used by the parish councils to grant development approvals, developers will now be mandated to have adequate storage facilities before finally being placed on the NWC network. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called for a reclassification of small islands developing states as upper middle income countries which locks them out of development financing. He was addressing the United Nations General Assembly in New York last Friday. This touches on the issue of graduation criteria which do not take account of the range of vulnerabilities facing middle income countries. Our economies face further challenges from de-risking and the attendant problems of the loss of correspondent banking relations, which severely impede access to essential financial services. Prime Minister Holness cited Jamaica's emerging economic stability, but he urged the Assembly for collaboration in tracking crime in the island, which threatens stability, in particular to stem the flow of illegal firearms into the country. In addition to cutting youth unemployment in half over the last three years, Jamaica has achieved a record low unemployment rate of 7.8%, 18 consecutive quarters of economic growth, low and stable inflation, and a reduction in our debt to GDP ratio from 147% to 95%. The malignant link between organized crime, the illegal drug trade, and the illicit proliferation and trafficking of small arms require transnational, regional, and multilateral action. We therefore not only rely on the support of our neighboring countries, but we look to the UN to continue to play a pivotal role in supporting peace and security at all levels, including with respect to the proliferation of conventional weapons. The theme of the assembly is galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. The government is considering expanding the current ban on single-use plastics. Jamaica currently has a ban on plastics known as scandal bags, as well as plastic straws. Addressing the United Nations General Assembly on Friday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the current ban on single-use plastic bags and straws, which was implemented on January 1 this year, is working. While the Prime Minister did not elaborate on its possible expansion, he said it would go hand in hand with Jamaica strengthening its waste management systems. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries is moving to develop Jamaica's cannabis industry through partnership. Portfolio Minister Audley Shaw has disclosed that the ministry will be partnering with the Harvard International Phytomedicines and Medical Cannabis Institute, HIPI, in the United States on issues aimed at improving the country's competitiveness in the global cannabis industry. 
Representatives of HIPI will be visiting the island from September 30 to October 2 as part of the impending arrangement. During the visit, the group will be participating in informational tours of key facilities that are heavily involved in research related to cannabis and other medicinal plants. Minister Shaw was addressing the opening of the CanEx Business Conference and Expo at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James last Thursday. The recent mauling of a teacher by dogs in St. Andrew has galvanized the Senate to call for immediate action on the issue of dog ownership. At last Friday's sitting of the Senate, senators on both sides of the aisle were unanimous in calls for the issue to be remedied with legislation. The incident, in reference, occurred on Thursday, September 17, when a St. Richard's primary school teacher was reportedly mauled for hours by four pit bulls near her home in Coopers Hill, St. Andrew. Three of the four dogs have since been euthanized. Government Senator Carencia Morrison last Friday pointed out the inadequacy of current laws in addressing issues such as this. This is not the first attack on citizens by ferocious dogs who have not been properly secured by their owners. Not to say that that has happened in this case. And such attacks have often resulted in critical injury and even death. The frequency of such attacks demands immediate attention of legislators, our immediate attention, as the law in its present form does not capture criminal liability for the owners of the dogs. Leader of Opposition Business in the Senate, Donna Scott Mutley, also threw her weight behind the call and insisted it cannot be business as usual. It is only when we have an event like this that the entire society becomes galvanized Mandy, about the Mandy, outcome Mandy, and then it abates. Mandy, the fact is, Mr. President, that pit bulls are banned from entering our island. And how they come here is that there's a vast illegal trade. But if they are here and they are banned, the authorities must do something about them when they discover their presence. Senator Morrison pointed to proposals being posited in the public, such as citizens getting licenses to own, quote, vicious, end quote, dogs, such as pit bulls, specifications for the height of a fence around the home of dog owners, or whether owners should be allowed to walk these dogs in a public space. There will be no school today, September 30, at Arden Preparatory and Extension High, following a fire at the school on Saturday. Principal Kerenth Campbell said the decision was taken based on advice from fire investigators. It was not clear what sparked the early morning fire. However, Campbell said the administrative block, which houses the main office, principal's office, two vice principal's office, staff rooms, nurse station, and a kinder bathroom have all been compromised thoroughly. The computer system and surveillance camera were also damaged. The principal, who explained that both schools have combined population of approximately 500 students, said it was too early to see or say if classes will resume on Tuesday. Jamaicans for Justice, JFJ, is confident that payment to the Coral Gardens Rastafarians will begin before Christmas. Members of that community were brutalized by the state in 1963 in Coral Gardens. Compensation for the victims was contingent on a social inquiry report done by the Office of the Public Defender, Arlene Harrison Henry, which was submitted back in April to the Office of the Prime Minister. JFJ, the legal entity representing the victims, said the report identified by beneficiaries and determined the members of the trust fund. Prime Minister Andrew Holness also apologized to the Rastafarian community for the brutalization committed 56 years ago. JFJ Executive Director Roger Malcolm said the group has now received all outstanding information necessary to finalize the trust through consensus deliberations with the Administrator General Department.
The main road from Lower Tappleton to Rock River in Clarendon has been closed with immediate effect. The thoroughfare was damaged by recent heavy rains. A section of the road has eroded and the retaining wall has collapsed. The National Works Agency says motorists should use the alternative route through Turner's. In regional news, the United Nations Human Rights Council will investigate alleged human rights violations in Venezuela, including executions, disappearances and torture. According to the BBC, the forum approved sending a fact-finding mission after a resolution was put forward by Venezuela's neighbours and backed by European countries. It's being reported that many of the 6,000 deaths in security raids since January 2018 could have been extrajudicial executions. According to the UN, the country is suffering a severe economic and political crisis, and a quarter of its 30 million population need aid. Some 4 million people have fled in recent years. In sports, the island is still basking in the afterglow of a brilliant victory after Shellyann Fraser Price won an unprecedented fourth 100 meters world title and made a strong claim as the greatest female sprinter of all time by capturing her eighth global title on Sunday. It was Jamaica's second gold medal at the 17th International Association of Athletics Federation's World Athletics Championships inside Khalifa International Stadium and moved the tiny island nation of Jamaica to a third place in the medals table with three after the mixed relay 4x400 meters team had won a silver medal earlier. The United States of America lead the table with eight medals inclusive of four gold and four silver. China are second with six medals, two golds, two silvers, and two bronze. And that's the news on PBCJ. Thanks so much for watching.